crepe uh, is the French word for pancake. Um, they can be sweet or savory. They can be used uh, made savory and served with a side salad for a light supper, or they can be actually made with a sweeter batter and served as a dessert. So they offer a, a lot of versatility uh, for the home chef. And today we're actually going to be making some crepes. I'm going to show you how to make the batter, and then we're going to actually cook some uh, and show you how easy it is to cook them on the stove as well. When you start um, making crepes, the batter is, um, there's a couple of things about the batter. It's just very simple with eggs, flour, um, sugar if you're doing sweet. Today I'm going to do savory, and you certainly in a savory could add uh, chopped uh, chives. You can even do, uh, I've done some mushroom or chicken broth instead of the water. So you want to start, I usually like to start with the liquid in the bottom of the blender, or you could also do this in, with a whisk and a, in a bowl. Either one. You just want to prevent lumps. You just want to make sure it's a really smooth batter. So we have one uh, cup of milk. And I like to go ahead and put the eggs in next as well, the, the more liquid ingredients. So two, whoops, two large eggs without the eggshell. It's always helpful, so make sure that eggshell doesn't get in there. But I like to crack them first in the bowl, just to make sure everything is okay with those eggs. Two large eggs. Okay. Quarter teaspoon of salt. One cup of flour, and on the flour you could use half whole wheat, um, you could use other flours, you don't necessarily have to just use um, unbleached all-purpose flour. A quarter cup of, uh, I'm sorry, a third a cup of water actually. And then I've got some melted butter over here on the stove, and I'm just going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. One, two. You could substitute canola oil or olive oil if you're looking at from a health standpoint, but it will change the texture and the flavor of the... About five seconds, I kind of look at the side of it, get a spatula, and just kind of make sure everything is stirred up. Okay, now the thing about... Let me just whirl this one more time. The thing about crepe batter is the important thing, you need to set it off into the refrigerator to rest. And the reason for this is it allows the gluten in the flour, which has all been churned up in the, in the blender, needs to rest a little bit, just like when you bake bread. And you also want to get rid of the, there's a lot of air bubbles on the top here, and you want those to dissip, uh, dis dissipate. So put, this, put it in the refrigerator. I keep it right in the uh, blender container and let it sit for about two hours. You'll get the most tender uh, crepe if you let it sit for two hours. Hour at the, mo uh, at the least and two hours is the best. Okay. <laughs> when you're ready to make your crepes, um, you want to have the right pan. And a seven inch skillet, if this is what you have in your kitchen, that's great. And even a nine inch skillet. Uh, Non-stick preferred will make your job a lot easier in regard to turning them over and cooking them. They do make special pans for crepes, and I personally found those, find those to be the most beneficial and just the easiest. And they always are a very flat pan, very, very flat, with just a very low side. Um, this one is a very inexpensive, non-stick surface um, pan that works great. It's available locally. And this one here is even um, a little bit more expensive. It's a very heavy-duty aluminum um, base on it and a non-stick surface here. Makes a big crepe, uh, 10 inch, and I prefer the crepes to be a little bit smaller than that. My favorite of all, which is the one I'm heating up here, is the Blue Steel. It's a French version. It's from France. It's very inexpensive, and you can see that I have used it a lot. And they call it blue steel because it actually takes on a uh, blue hue as it heats up and it gets seasoned. The more you use it, the better it gets in regard to being nonstick. Very similar to cast iron. Okay. Now, to, you want to put it on a medium heat, medium high heat. Uh, because this one conducts heat so well, I like to just do a little test and see if the bubbles of water, those are just water bits, kind of dance on the pan, and they sure do. And keep in mind that when you bring your batter out of the refrigerator after you've um, let it rest and get the air bubbles out for about two hours. You do need to stir it up and I would also bring it out of the refrigerator a half hour before you're starting to make them. You want them to be at room temperature. So, and also keep in mind the first one is your test, okay, because you want to make sure the temperature is correct. You want to make sure that um, you're swirling and you've got enough batter in there. I find for this size pan, and I've done some experimentation with it, my two ounce ladle works perfect, 
okay? And I have a little di uh, dish here of softened butter and just a paper towel. Some people use melted butter. I get more control out of just using a little bit of butter like that. I, don't, I just get just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Take it off the heat, okay? And go ahead and put it into the center. And then while you're doing that, just swirl it around. And if you get a few air bubbles or a little, then you can just fill those in with the batter. It, it doesn't matter. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. And it takes about a minute on one side, and then we're going to flip it on the other side, and it takes another 15 minutes. It's, they're very easy. Now, you could make these all ahead of time. Put them between wax paper, which I'm all ready to do here, and just layer them up and go ahead and wrap them in aluminum foil and put it in a Ziploc bag and you can freeze them and you can take out what you need, when you need it for a simple weeknight dinner or entertaining guests. So it's, it's just very easy. This is still pretty moist right here and it's just drying on the edges. So that's, that's what you want. Now, how to flip. A lot of people do the uh, spatula like I have here. I honestly like to also go like this and just take my fingers and flip it over. Just do the spatula first, because that really is the way. And then just go ahead and slide it in. Don't worry if it doesn't uh, fit into the pan exactly. It'll be just fine. And there you go. That's your one crab. You want them to be light. You don't want them to be dark brown. They should be very delicate looking and very light, because they're a delicate pancake. Okay. So that one, five seconds more, or ten seconds on that one side. And then just come over to your pan here. Let me show you what I have. You can put the wax paper in between later, or you can do it now, and they just slide right out. I just stack them up and you're on to the next one. Put your pan back on the heat to get it kind of heated up. You don't have to test with the water now that you've got started. That was a pretty good crap for the first one, actually. So if yours doesn't turn out that way, don't worry about it. This will make about 16 this size, so you don't really, you can't afford probably to have one not be so great. And there you go. The swirl is just practice. It's so easy and you'll find it much easier. You've got to lift the pan up and swirl it. Yeah, a pie. Then we'll let that cook a little bit. It gets crisp on the outside edge here and gets a little brown underneath and then we'll flip it.